and this helps you to create stories. You take your own stories, stories from other people, stories you've read in papers and magazines. Storytelling is, is, is part of the art of persuasion, absolutely. Speaking of stories. Oh, do we have a story? We have a story, once upon a time, boys and girls. Okay, before I do this, but before I do the story, and I will get to it, I promise I'm gonna do it right now. <laughs> the story, I want everyone to get out a pen and paper right now. You have, a, I'm gonna give homework. I know you're all waiting for th the three o'clock bell to ring. Everybody, anybody re know what I'm talking about, okay? Anybody remember three o'clock? Did I, everybody get out of school at three o'clock like I did? Get on a bus and then ride another 45 minutes to get home? Uh, um, homework, assignment, homework assignment. This is real important. And if you do this homework assignment, your likelihood of financial success and sales and everything we've talked about today, spoken about today, might come true. Might. Okay. See, I said the legal word, might. <laughs> might. Uh, no guarantees. <laughs> Four years of law school, I have to use it once in a while. Uh, <laughs> I want everybody, this is your gauntlet for this week. I want you to speak to a stranger in a public place. I want you to, in, I want you to start a conversation with a total stranger when you're waiting for your jamba juice, uh, your carrot juice and jamba. Uh, what is it called, Jamba Juice? I want you to talk with the person in front of you or behind you. When you're at Starbucks, I want you to in start a conversation. I want it to last more than 60 seconds. There is, okay. So, and I want you to come back to me and let me know how long you spoke to that person. The person who has the longest conversation on our system with a stranger will get a, a really great prize next week. So it okay. can't be retroactive because Larry had like a half an hour conversation with a perfect stranger when we were down in Palm Springs at a street fair. No. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> I want to hear that story if we have time. Absolutely. <laughs> so does everybody have the homework assignment? Yes, Professor Claude. Yes. 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 Okay. I, I want you to do it. Now let me tell you the story that happened to Claude. My word of honor. This is what happened yesterday. Claudia and I love, on Saturday or Sundays, we have a favorite little restaurant. Larry and Marishka know what I'm talking about, which is, it's called the Blue, uh, the Blue Water Seafood Grill. It, mar it marketing Grill. And it was on um, uh, Guy Ferreri's Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives uh, on there. And the place is so popular that it, abs that it absolutely is always a line it goes out the, that it goes out the door there. So we go in and the line is about 35, 40 people deep. It's a half hour line. It, but this place is worth it. The food is that good. It's always fresh seafood. You can get uh, San Diego tacos or Chia Pino and well, I'm making you hungry, right? <laughs> Rochelle, uh, you look hungry. <laughs> so we're waiting in line. There's a couple in front of us, a nice couple, um, 40, 45 years old. They're right in front of us. I never, we don't know who they are. They're standing in line. And um, the line, uh, I, I'm trying to remember what I said. I like to talk to people in line. Why? It makes time go faster, doesn't it? When I'm on the chairlift, in, when I'm in Colorado, I talk to the people on the chairlift, you know? And sometimes it's like crickets on that thing. You know, it's a 20-minute ride. Why not talk to somebody? It makes the time go faster. These people are in line, and the line moved up about six inches. So I went to them, hurry up, the line, you know, step forward. The line just moved, you know? And they laughed. They smiled at me. The wife of the, uh, the wife, they were a married couple. She was a little shy, and the man said, is it always this busy? I said, yeah, it's very popular. We started a dialogue about the restaurant and what to eat and what not to eat. Then the wife started relaxing. She started turn, turning in. So we're online for a half hour with these people. I go get them some menus from the front because I know the owner of the place. I get a couple menus. I bring it back. We start talking about what our favorite foods are and everything else. While the line is slowly moving forward. It was at least 35 minutes, this line. Okay, and we're talking and talking. We start to find out, well, oh, they live, are you from out of town? Oh, no, we live in Vista, California. Oh, really? Okay. And how long you been here? And we start talking and talking, and they finally get up to the cash register about 35 minutes later. And they, the place turns over crazy. Larry Marish can know what I'm talking about. So they get to their table, and um, then Claudia took over. She said, can I, can would you like to sit with us? We had so much fun talking to you. We were laughing, we were talking and everything. And they said, okay, let's, 
why don't we, yeah, why don't you join us? So we're sitting down, we, and the, right away, uh, the husband goes to me, do you have a business card? So naturally, Mr. Sales Trainer says, no, I left them home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and he, he, he says, what's your number? I'll email you my business. Oh, fine, what do you do? Typical question, okay? He works, he's, he's head of an insurance agency. He represents 14 insurance companies. He's, it's, he's very big in insurance. And get what do insurance people, um, what do they like to talk about more than anything? <laughs> Themselves. <laughs> okay, that's good. But what do insurance people do that we talk about for the last uh, 46 minutes? Sales. Sales and, yeah. Sales, talking on the phone. Oh, what's your biggest challenge? What's your biggest problem? What, you know, what do you find uh, when you train people or hire people? We start talking about, we're having fun. I start talking to the wife. She, okay, this guy's head of an insurance company. The wife is the daughter of a diplomat. She's been all over the world. She lived in Switzerland, Germany, uh, France, um, uh, um, in Africa, and and she went to she went to school to be a doctor and fascinating people fascinating people we exchanged we had such a good time and we left we told them our stories they told us their stories what's my point ladies and gentlemen what's the takeaway what's the epiphany the revelation the shekiano moment here what is it all about how to talk to people and make connections right i've got two people now uh, you know, one's with an insurance agency, he deals with all kinds of people. I'm a sales trainer. I'm talking to people who need, who want to improve their life, who want to be a better salespeople. Mm -hmm. can, it re can it relate to real estate or anything else? Of course. So, guess, so I said, would you like a free copy of my book? Maybe that would help you. So, yes, thank you. And then I got a text back from him. I'll find it if I get a moment's break here. And he said, Claude, can we meet again for lunch? When we got home, I got the text from this guy. Okay. What my point is, somebody help me here. What's my point here? Uh, you just never know where the next lead is going to come from. Yes. Yep. All we have to do is talk to people. We have to be proactive. We have to say, so this is your homework assignment. You never know. This, the, this woman is fascinating. She's been all over the world. Her father was the diplomat. For what country was it? Uh, oh, it was Ghana. Ghana or was it? West Africa. Yeah, West Africa, Ghana. She's, she speaks four languages and everything. Fascinating people. Cool. And it's not some, the thing about it is it makes waiting in line very interesting. I think it also, here's my point. I think it hones your skills. We have to practice, we have to practice being outgoing. We have to be, we have to, per, we have to be the person that gets things going. <laughs> Most people will not start a conversation with a stranger, right? <clears throat> you, you never know who you're standing in line with. People have stories. They may refer business to me. I don't know if I'm going to do business with, this, with these people, with this man. But I think I said in my book, if he reads my book and we have another lunch meeting this week, just because we had so much fun, I think we need to do more of this. We need to speak to more people people every day. We will do more deals. We will have a lot more fun. We can make this business not only very financially rewarding. I think we can have a lot of fun while we're doing it, but we have to be the, pro the what's the word, protagonist. No, that's the evil person. We have the person who has to be proactive. We have to get, we have to start the conversation, even if it's something um, gee, what do you think about this or that? Stay away from politics, religion, sex, and diets, of course. Like all good matters, we should. But, you know, <laughs> but this, this was my point about this. If I can talk to strangers all day, I challenge myself a minimum of five new people a day. I don't, if it's on the phone, it's in my database, if they call me, or if I'm online at a restaurant, I'm going to talk to enough people. And somebody needs real estate or needs sales training, or life insurance, or the next network marketing. There's people out, I truly believe, maybe I have rose-colored glasses on, I truly believe that people like to talk to other people. We all have stories. We all want to talk to someone who's non-threatening, who's friendly. Comments, questions? That's human. That, that's, that's humanity. It, people, we, we are social creatures. We need connection. We want to be heard. People more than anything else crave being not just, not just listened to, but actually heard and feel like they're understood. 
And I, I completely agree with that. In fact, um, a friend of ours um, 